better watch out. Looks like Bill's got himself a secret admirer. So it seems. Well, at least you know that uh, she has good taste in men. Jessica, I'm sorry to disappoint you ladies, but it's strictly business. Excuse me, darling. Sponsors early evenings on ITV3. Oi, oi! Message! Out of her free. Pricey just said he's been with Punter at Dallas for a few hours. Huh? Pricey just said he's been with Punter so at Dallas for a few hours. No, he disappeared. And even longer since George left and Helen went to find him. Excuse me, Mrs. Lawton. We're finished cleaning up, but I'm afraid we've run out of refrigerator space for the leftovers. Oh. Yes, let's see. Oh, there's always the old refrigerator in the cellar. Oh, Jess, would you mind getting the caterer's check from the household cash box? I think Helen keeps it in the living room desk, bottom drawer. Of course. Oh, she's gonna find. Oi, oi! Message! George, Brack. What are you doing with that? Oh, I'm sorry, Anne asked me to get the caterer's check. That, that doesn't give you the right to poke into my things. Helen, why didn't you tell Anne that George was coming? I was going to. I... Bill was here. That just didn't seem to be the right moment. Well, what did Dr. Carlson tell you? I didn't speak to Dr. Carlson. His secretary called me and told me that he was upset that George was released. I meant to call Dr. Carson, but I just never got around. Another day, right, boy. Dun, dun, dun. Dun. Excuse me, Sheriff Barnes? Yes, ma'am. I thought you ought to know that Anne is being sedated. Perhaps if you could hold any further questions, at least until tomorrow. Well, that's, that's all right. There's no doubt about what happened down here. Deja vu all over again, ain't it? I beg your pardon? Look, you're Mrs. Fletcher, isn't it? I know George Owens is your cousin, but he is also a certified psychopath who once killed a man, and from the look of it, he's done it again. Well, I agree. That's certainly the most obvious conclusion to draw. Now, it is the only conclusion. I mean, just look around here. It is exactly the same as the murder 15 years ago. It's the same place, same circumstances. And I'd be willing to bet that the missing murder weapon is the same, too. Clipping shears. Yes, but that's what's so puzzling. It's as if the first murder had been duplicated exactly, even though George has never been able to remember what happened that night. He was at the trial, ma'am. He did hear the testimony. And besides, the papers were full of all the details. Yes, but doesn't that mean anyone with reason could have killed Bill Spencer? I mean, from what I've heard, he wasn't exactly an angel growing up here in Fairville. But I know you're supposed to be some kind of a, a mystery writer. But there just ain't no mystery about this. Believe me, George sent a note, lured Bill down here, killed him, took the note. But why would George kill a man he'd never met until today? For the same reason he killed Anne's last fiancé, Professor Rollins. And that is? Jealousy. Now, I know it sounds a little twisted, but that's what I get. Two women raising a boy on their own. Rather than lose a sister that he's looked on as a mother since he was a boy of ten, he kills off her bows. I won't calm down, and I won't be told to take it easy. I will not take it easy. Sheriff, I think you better get up here. We got ourselves a crazy man. I demand 
be told what's going on here. And just who is it wants to know? Dr. Henry Carlson. I'm a psychiatrist with the Allenwood Institution. George Owens is one of my patients. Good job, Doc. Why? Has something happened to George? Happened to him? Hardly. Dr. Carlson, I'm George's cousin, uh, Jessica Fletcher. A man has been killed here tonight. Now, George left the house just before it occurred, and he hasn't been seen or heard from since. Are you suggesting that George committed murder? That's absurd. The chances of George becoming violent are practically nil. Is that a fact? Well, if old George is so well adjusted, what are you doing here? It's my opinion that George is on the verge of a final breakthrough. I felt that to release him could jeopardize his total recovery. I returned from a conference to find that the board had overruled me. I drove all day to get here, hoping that I could arrange for some private counseling for George. Well, you're too late, Doc. George snapped, just like you warned him he would. You tell your cousins I'll check back in the morning, okay? In the meantime, I'll, uh, I'll leave a man out front just in case George decides to uh, come home. If you hear from him, he calls, you tell me right away, okay? I mean, cousin or not, George has killed someone. Could be nobody's gonna be safe till uh, he gets locked up. Doc, man. Damned fool. Doctor, I've known George all his life. And frankly, I've never fully accepted his murder conviction. My work with George has led me to the same doubt. But I've tried everything from drugs to hypnosis to try and break through his amnesia block. Nothing worked. All he kept saying is that he saw something bright and shiny. And then nothing. I can't believe that I'm wrong about George. Guilty or not, George is in grave danger of being put away for the rest of his life. If you'll excuse me. I'm going to take a room at the local hotel for now. I'll call you in the morning and see if I can get some help. Thank you, Doctor. Good night, Doctor. 